In the previous video, we saw how lithium was very similar to magnesium, beryllium was very similar to aluminium, and boron was similar to silicon. We understood that there was an anomalous behavior in second period elements. And now it is time to understand what causes this diagonal relationship and what is the consequence of this diagonal relationship. So in this video, let's dive deep into what causes this diagonal relationship. Why not a vertical relationship or a horizontal relationship? Why a diagonal only? Huh? See, when we will be talking about the different trends, you will see that the diagonal relationship is caused by the counteracting effects of moving across a period and down a group. So, when we are actually moving across a period, the trends will be a certain way. When we are moving down the group, the trends are mostly going to be opposite. And that is why if we look at them as two vectors, the resultant shall be that's right. This shall be the resultant vector, right? And what is it? Well, you got it. It's a diagonal, right? So going diagonally actually balances out these opposing trends, which is this vector sum of periodic trends balancing out across the diagonal, all right? And as a result, if we talk about the consequence of diagonal relationship, they will have similar charge to radius ratio. Let's understand it with the data of charge to radius ratios. Charge by radius ratio of lithium plus. Hmm. Whom should we match it with? It's closest to, you would say, magnesium 2 plus. And there you go. You found out the diagonal pairs on your own just by looking at the charge by radius ratio. Now, let me ask you the same for the beryllium 2 plus. The charge by radius ratio is closest to, well... That's not a surprise. It is very similar to aluminium 3 plus. We found out an other diagonal pair, isn't it? All by the data of charge by radius ratio. And hey, no surprise, boron and silicon, we can clearly see the charge by radius ratio is so similar. And hence, yeah, we can figure out that they should form a diagonal relationship. So there you go, boron and Silicon is another diagonal pair and that can clearly be figured out from this charge by radius ratio. And let me also tell you, this boron 3 plus and silicon 4 plus are not normally found as free ions. Of course, because of the high charge density and polarizability. But yes, their charge to radius ratios are still quite comparable and this is mostly by deduction. That means it's a theoretical value that we have out here. Okay. And it's not just the similar charge to radius ratio, but you will see that in a diagonal, the electronegativities are very comparable as well. Yeah, let's take a look at the electronegativity data also. Check. So, we know that electronegativity increases along the period. And when we're talking about electronegativity down the group, it decreases. So, electronegativity decreases down the group, increases along the period. As a result, the counteracting effect is going to balance out in a diagonal. And that can be clearly observed. Lithium and magnesium does have very comparable electronegativity. Beryllium and aluminium also have a very comparable electronegativity. Boron and silicon also have a very similar electronegativity. Yeah. In fact, the same is true for the ionization energy also. The ionization energy in a diagonal are very similar. Now, again, if we move along the period, the ionization energy increases. When we go down the group, the ionization energy decreases. As a result, you will see that it is across a diagonal that we see that the similarity comes in. Now, interestingly, as a result of this similar charge to radius ratio, electronegativities and ionization energies, what we see is a very similar chemical bonding. Now, when I say chemical bonding, what I mean is the nature of the compound. For example, whether it is ionic, covalent or amphoteric, that is kind of very similar. And when we talk about the solubilities, that's also similar. Uh, the ability to form complexes and so and forth, right? So that all comes in chemical bonding. Now, let's take it with an example. So if I talk about lithium chloride and magnesium chloride, well, they are predominantly covalent. Whereas the other members like NaCl and calcium chloride are ionic. So 
lithium and magnesium clearly there's a diagonal relationship and that results in a very similar chemical bonding and if we talk about another diagonal pair that is beryllium and aluminium and look at these compounds beryllium oxide and aluminium oxide both are amphoteric that means they react with both acids and bases well with this now we are well versed with the anomalous behavior and the diagonal relationship all right now it is time for a question the question is which of the following does not show diagonal relationship pretty simple pause the video and try this question well i should rather give you option e also here all of these and uh, you might be tempted to mark that option e because when we see the periodic table we see that all these elements that has been mentioned are placed in the form of a diagonal like lithium and magnesium beryllium and aluminium boron and silicon carbon and phosphorus and all these are the options which are given to us so we saw elements with diagonal relationship have similarity in charge by radius ratio electronegativity and chemical behavior and it was not just about proximity if you remember right so when i'm talking about this carbon and phosphorus they differ too much in bonding in their oxidation states in the molecular structure in their chemical behavior so being close diagonally on a periodic table doesn't guarantee similar chemistry all right the diagonal relationship is the exception not the rule and only works when multiple periodic trends balance out just right okay so carbon and phosphorus simply don't make the cut and that's why that is our answer so which does not show it is carbon and phosphorus that does not show and a b and d does show diagonal relationship well that sums up everything that we have done so far